Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. And if you watched my previous video on my 55 gallon bin, you'll know that I harvested some worm castings. And today what we're going to do is we are going to make some worm tea and then we are going to make some bedding. So first things first, why did I put these castings in these bags? Do they remind you of oversized tea bags? Meh, sort of. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to put them in this uh, nice warm water and we're going to let them sit for a while. And while they're letting our tea do its thing, then we are going to take some of our organic liquid kelp. Um, I do have this linked below if you want to see exactly what I use. I do get a little commission from it. Uh, so like a, like a shot glass full. And this is basically kelp meal, which has um, a lot of nutrients that, you know, the microbes will need when uh, they're in my prepared bedding, you know, getting started so that it would be really available for the worms to eat once I feed it to them. So you can see here that it's like a 0 .30, 0 0.6 for NPK and that it has trace amounts of sulfur, magnesium, calcium, sodium, boron, iron, magnesium, no, manganese, sorry, zinc, copper, and carbohydrates. In addition to that, we're going to, and this is just what I learned to use, which is just unsulfured molasses. And similarly, I'm gonna put like a shot glass of that in there. Is there a reason why I use a shot glass? No. Uh, that is the amount for the size batch that I'm going to use. So I'm going to put my hand in here and although you probably can't tell the difference between the sulfured molasses and the castings, but basically all the liquid um, is going to come out of the castings, all of the stuff that's dissolvable, and then all of the solids um, are going to stay in the bag and then I can put them, I can reuse these bags and put the solids back into a worm bin. So why I don't want to use um, just castings and throw them in there, and I have done that in the past and one of the things that I've seen is that I get worms because even if you sift them super tiny, there's always one cocoon that's tinier than your screen. So now I make worm tea and you can see like in my hand, it's getting a little bit. You can you can tell that's not the molasses, but that's the liquid coming out of the tea bag. Now I'm not going to aerate this overnight or anything because I'm not feeding this to my plants. I'm using this to make worm bedding with. So generally, I will let this sit for a half hour, give or take. Make sure anything that can be dissolved will be. Let me grab the other tea bag in there. And these bags are nice. I can put a link. I don't normally have a link to these because um, they're normally a plant related thing more than a worm related thing. But I can put these bags in there if people are interested. And they're reusable. They're washable. Um, and uh, most of the time I'm just using them to cover up my clusters of grapes or figs so that the critters don't eat them before I get a chance to. So I'm going to go ahead and let that sit. And you see, let me get a little cup here. So you can see that we're kind of making coffee here. And now if I wanted to feed this to my plants, I would go and put a fish bubbler in here overnight and um, let the microbes grow. But being that this is going into worm bedding, I don't need to do that. Okay, on to the next part of the project, which is to get my coconut coir and my paper into my large bin. So let me turn you around. It is an 18 gallon bin. So as you can see we have an 18 gallon bin here and it's got the remnants of what I had left over from my bedding. So I'm gonna go get some more paper, shredded paper and shredded cardboard. Okay, four big handfuls and now we're gonna add some coconut corn. Then I'll add some more paper. Slash cardboard, slash junk mail more coconut core. 
Now this coconut coir has been rehydrated, rinsed, and pretty much allowed to dry again. And so even though you saw that block of it, uh, I'm using one that I've already pre-prepared. Pre All right, more paper. The function of the coconut coir is to make sure that the paper fibers don't stick together and make my life difficult when I'm trying to get the worms to eat it. All right, there we go. I'm going to fill this up to the top. It's going to be about 20 gallons of dry stuff. So I've probably used, you know, 18, or, you know, gallons of paper and probably half a gallon of, or a gallon, yeah, probably a gallon of the coconut coir. Okay, so you can see that my little bags are about half the volume that they were before. They've been soaking for about a half hour. Now we're going to add the four gallon bucket of water to this bin. So then I'm just going to keep mixing this up until it is completely incorporated. If I need to add more, you know, like pure water that doesn't have anything in it to make sure the moisture is correct, I will do that. Now ideally I would let this sit for at least a week. Uh, it would be better if it was two. And then that will let the microbes from the worm castings and the nutrients from the molasses and the kelp meal or the, the seaweed extract uh, do their work. Now if you don't have um, all of the ingredients for this, that's fine. You can substitute regular peat moss for cocoa peat. You can substitute any sort of sugar for the molasses and any sort of nitrogen for the, um, the kelp or the seaweed. So if you have fresh grass clippings or if you have coffee, coffee's a good nitrogen source. Uh, basically what you're trying to do is make sure that the microbes in the bin have everything they need to survive and thrive. So I usually make a batch of this once a month and I usually make it for each part of my worm bin. So this is for my mixed species. Um, I'm still keeping separate um, containers for the different kinds of worms. So the, the mixed species will have this and the uh, European night crawlers have their own. The African night crawlers upstairs have their own and then the red wigglers have their own. So we just get this completely incorporated. And it does, I think it helps to use warm water. Feels better on my hands, especially since it's winter. Um, but I also think that it dissolves the ingredients better and also I think it absorbs into the paper better. So you're seeing a little bit of water drip out of that, but I imagine there's still some paper in here I haven't completely incorporated. So if you have any questions about um, how I do this or why, um, put that in the comments below. If you have any suggestions to make this better, oh, wait, I forgot. Oh. I almost forgot. I put, <laughs> yeah, the whole reason that I put the, um, the eggshell in with the bedding is so I don't forget when I'm feeding my worms. And I almost forgot to put it in the bedding. Boy, I tell you, I don't remember being this dingy my whole life. Forget things. Um, now anybody who's known me for a long time probably would tell you I was dingy before. But I wasn't so forgetful. All right, so there we have it. We've got the paper bedding, we've got the nutrients, we've got the grit, and in about a week or two, then this will be the perfect bedding for my worms. Um, as a note, I know that sometimes, this is part of the fun facts thing, some people have spoken on uh, that worms don't eat the food, they eat the bacteria that eats the food, and the book that I have been reading recently has told me that they have done research where they've actually opened up the worm and looked in its stomach and had found that they actually do eat the food that fits in their mouth. And different kinds of worms were found to have had different kinds of things in their tummies. So they are actually eating the food and of course, you know, it helps if it's smaller to fit in their little mouth. But uh, I thought that was interesting. I was kind of of the mind that they probably eat whatever eats the stuff, but they actually do eat their leaves and their bedding 
as well as other fibers they find in the ground. All right, guys. Well, if you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.